Hey, I'm Rue McDonald. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my home course, Crude and Bake. So it's Saturday night here at Croonan Bay, out for a quick nine holes, eight o'clock. I uh, just wanted to show you this house that is for sale here, beside the second tee. It's, if anyone's out there has a spare £450,000 for this five or six bedroom house. But basically what you can walk to the second tee. Uh, yeah, I'll be interested to hear from you. Maybe a joint venture possibility. Definitely a good investment, and this is the second hole here. Standing on the second green here, I think the second hole at Croonan Bay is one of the most underrated holes. It plays to this tabletop green, 330 yards, but anything short for your second shot rolls about 100 yards back down the fairway alongside the main street of Croonan Bay, which is, provides a nice atmosphere and a gentle start to your round, but Definitely a, a Tom Morris green which I think people would enjoy playing. It drops off the back there as well, so very much a tabletop green. And then just over here is the uh, the old third hole. It's now part of the nine hole course, which is in the middle of the, the main course here at Kroonby. But both the eighth hole and the sixth hole were original Tom Morris holes. And Tom Simpson added the next two holes, which happened to be probably my two favourite holes on the course. The third and fourth, so let's go play that. So this this contraption definitely wasn't around when Tom Morris or Tom Simpson designed any golf holes here. So we have a traffic light system that we push when we're when we've teed off this drivable par four third hole. And then it either triggers after a certain amount of time, goes green to let other people tee off behind, or there's another button down at the green that we would push to uh, to give people the okay. But you can see here a very, very unassuming or directionless hole tee shot here. Croonan Bay probably has about six blind shots. So if you're coming here, hopefully you, my videos help inspire you to come here. That's the purpose of this. When you come here, try and play 36 holes because the first time playing the third hole, you won't have a clue where you're going, but we're aiming at that marker pole and we're hitting driver. So all short, drivable par 4 should have a very interesting green complex. And I'm no golf architect, but I would say this green complex is pretty interesting. Big putting surface, lots of little areas, and you saw my shot here into this little bowl. So the, the, drival, the driver marker is where that blue roof is. And all balls normally finish off where I finished, just short of the green. But if you do obviously land on the green, you've got a tricky two putt for your birdie. And yeah, if I just show you behind me the setting we have as well. This is the old fishing town of Croonan Bay. It's actually called Port Errol. Croonan Bay is a much more uh, touristy name, which they came up with later on. But this is the original Croonan Bay and the beach. And yeah, definitely my favourite part of the golf course. If you're a believer of signature golf holes on golf courses, this is it. Crude and base fourth, pretty self-explanatory. 
that town that I mentioned previously. Par three and the members tee back there, making it 200 yards. And maybe one of the one of the hardest par threes in Scotland. But thankfully, we're 150 yards here. And yeah, don't have to say much more. Beautiful spot. As a former caddy, it'd be remiss of me not to say what I always used to say to my clients here at Croon Bay. Those houses, beautiful and old, probably 200 years old. And you can imagine the northerly winds over the top of the houses in the winter time, beautifully shielded by some big sand dunes behind them. So the back windows wouldn't have much of a view, but they would protect the houses from the, the uh, pretty rough winter storms we get here in Scotland. So. Classic caddy contradiction here again. If I'm thinking back to my caddy days, I would always tell my clients to go a club more and not to end up short of the green like I have done here. But I'm going to listen to my caddy self and the putter is always your best friend from tight lies when you've got no green to work with. So it's putter all day long. Try and get out of here with a four, three putts and move to the fifth. We have the sixth green and the famous bloody burn here at Croonan Bay. Made famous about a thousand or so years ago when the Vikings and the Scots had a little battle here. And rumour has it that blood ran red with blood. Hence the name bloody burn. We're here on the seventh tee box and I wanted to show you, not only is this hole probably the most underrated on the golf course, strong dog wagging left. I wanted to show you this new feature on the course which are these blowout bunkers which for me showcase and remind us all just what's underneath all this grass is pure sand and before this was all gorse bushes and for those that don't know gorse bushes are evasive plants that grow across lynx land and really disrupt natural lynx land so They've took it, taken those out and they've made this hole visually more appealing off the tee but also more playable if you do miss hit your tee shot you're in a in a sort of shallow bunker that you can get out and, and get back in but a great addition that the, the green staff here at Croonan are doing is not too much of these bunkers but the odd bunker here and there that that makes it feel more natural and authentic. So we're on the caddy vibe again. I caddied here during my university days, during the summer. Loved it, I met some amazing people. I caddied for real entrepreneurial people and people you look at and aspire to and you meet interesting people from different parts of the world. And one of the caddy myths, stories that we would tell, and there is some truth to this. This massive mound that I'm standing on is in the middle of the 17th fairway and it's a real great feature of this hole because you've got to drive either side of it but the legend goes that this is a burial site from that battle of Cruden which I referred to about the sixth hole and the bloody burn so yeah um, architecturally it's it's interesting it's a natural landform or it's man-made whatever way you want to uh, you want to decide but it certainly makes for come down and show you from the bottom of the fairway. It makes for a really interesting tee shot. Unfortunately again the technology it's almost becoming a little bit obsolete but even me the shortest of hitters has passed it today but really interesting and if you obviously hit a little bit short and right and you're behind the land, behind the, the uh, dune, 
leaving you a blind shot. But yeah, I um, I loved caddying here. Every summer you make you make enough beer money to get you through um, at least two terms of university. And between that and working in the pro shop here, I loved it. And then I fell in love with golf tourism. I managed to get a job in golf tourism. And now I'm working at the European Tour, which is golf tourism related. But yeah, that'll be all for tonight. tonight's vlog. Thanks for tuning in and uh, thanks for all the comments and some interesting emails I received. Just from the first three videos I've done. It's very encouraging that so many of you are enjoying the, the content. It's, it's very... Uh, it's very much at its infancy, I've got loads of plans with the YouTube channel so please bear with me, the quality might not be as good as I want it at, that, at this stage but I do have aspirations to improve that and improve where we go as well and uh, go further afield to other parts of Scotland I've got trips to Cullen and Castle Stewart this week and then I'm playing Merker Golf Links and I'm going back to Fraserburgh on Saturday so lots of content to come but it's been one of those mega nights here at Curran Bay. Not a breath of wind, overcast, late night, emergency nine. And I feel very lucky to be a member here and lucky to be playing golf in Scotland. So subscribe and leave comments and encourage me to make more of these because I really enjoy uh, showcasing my country to you all. So until uh, later on this week at Cullen and Castle Stewart, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon.